Good morning, Digital Cathedral family. Glad you're with me this morning. I am so pumped up to get this teaching out this morning and the next two Sunday mornings. I'm, I'm always excited to come over and be with you on Sunday morning, but I've been working for five weeks putting found foundation to get you to where we're at this morning and to where I want to take you over the next three, well, actually two weeks after today. Let me start over in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We're going to plow some ground this morning. This, this could be life-changing. I will just tell you for sure what I'm going to teach this morning and the next two Sunday mornings have changed my life. And I feel that we're at a point now, I've taken this down a little deeper than I have at any other time in the past, and I think it's just time to share it and, and help you uh, to accomplish some things that you want to in life. All right. So let's, let me just, one more little foundation. Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing. So God created man in his image, in the image of God, he created him male and female and God blessed them. God always blesses what he creates. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the ground. Now when God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, <clears throat> there's, a, there's an underlying meaning there that I think is extremely important because we're the only ones that were ever created in the image and likeness of God. Your pet dog wasn't, your goldfish wasn't. So for us to consciously recognize that we are in the likeness of God himself, that means that we are the one creation that he has empowered, and he laid it out so specifically in those three verses, the plan, that we are the one creation that is able to bring the plans and the purposes of God to the planet. It is through us that God's purposes are realized. So we can, as a result of that, in this way be seen as a co-creator with God. And I use that term very gingerly because I am not a creator. There's not, I can't create anything of myself. But I can manifest in the now, in that realm of visibility, that which previously was invisible. And I spent five weeks convincing you that you are in a position to be able to do that. Remember back, five, let me just, be, in, in two minutes, let me just say this, less than two minutes. Very first week that I began to lay the foundation to let you know that you can manifest in the now that which was invisible into a visible dimension because you are in the image and likeness of God. That first Sunday I talked to you about the fact, I called it the heavy revy. It is, the one, it is the one revelation that Paul, I think it is the revelation of revelations that Paul had, which is Christ in you. Now that positions you, that puts you in a place where you are able to manifest. In the second week, we talked about the fact that everything that you need has already been created. Everything pertains to life and godliness, and I might repeat that a couple times this morning. Everything that pertains to life and godliness belongs to you. That means it's already been created. The problem we talked about that second week is that it's in the realm of the invisible. But the promise of Jesus was that he would give us the spirit of truth that would lead us and guide us into all truth. Paul promised that he would meet every need that we have according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The third Sunday we talked about the authority that you have as a son and as a daughter of God that is beginning to manifest, that's what gives you a legal right to come into that dimension of the unseen, of the invisible, and begin to move it over into the visible. Then the fourth Sunday, we said, look, look grace is, is the access point. It's God's favor. It's God's goodness. It's not our ability. It's not our, our natural might or power. It's the grace of God, as is everything, that enables us, that empowers us. And then last Sunday, I said, look, the title of the message was Don't Settle. 
and I've challenged you to not settle for less. Don't settle for less than God's best. If you're living below where you feel God would have you to live, I want to assure you this morning that everything you need has been created. It's just in the invisible. And so this morning, next Sunday, and by the end of uh, two weeks from now, I want you to have a knowledge, and I want you to begin to practice. This is very practical. And let me say it's not a methodology. It's not a formula. But you, <laughs> you can move... Let me put it this way. Let, let, me call, let me call these three, three messages. I think this would be a good title. The recipe to co-create. The recipe to co-create. Or the recipe to manifest. Or maybe we could call it the recipe to move from the unseen into the seen. I'm going to give you a recipe. Now, the Father may have you uh, do it a little different. But I think what I'm going to teach you is going to inspire you and give you some revelation to begin to act on this yourself. For example, if I were to bake a cake, I want that cake to come out of the oven. You know, that, that I, love, I love chocolate cake. For that chocolate cake to come out of the oven, my wife, I'm not a baker. I've never baked a cake in my life, but my wife has. And I notice when she bakes a cake, she gets certain ingredients out. And I may leave some out, but I'll, you'll get the idea. If she's going to bake a cake, she has to get the flour, the eggs, the sugar, the salt, the milk, the baking soda, whatever else you need. But there's ingredients that have to be mixed and have to be blended or that cake is never going to come out of the oven. You can set those ingredients on the shelf and admire them, uh, talk about their truthfulness, their function. But until you actually mix them and blend them in the right amounts, the right formula, you're never going to get a cake. When I'm finished, two weeks from this morning, I want you to have the ingredients and the knowledge of how to mix them together. Like I said, the Father may have you mix them in a different order or, or tweak it for you. <clears throat> but I think that you're going to be able to see that you are, like the Father, a co-creator. And, and again, I say he's the creator but because I'm in his image and his likeness, he has empowered me to bring into visibility what previously was invisible because it's already there in the invisible created. So I'm going to explore some things. I may rock your world next couple of weeks. Some of you, your head's going to explode because you've never, you've never encountered this, but just stick with me. Again, this could change the dynamic of your life. It has changed mine. I'm going to give you some personal testimonies of what I'm teaching you that I've actually put it into practice. So we've got a goal. We've got a target with this. We're going to begin to utilize the power of imagination in a way that you've never utilized it before, which is one of the ingredients. It's not the whole cake. It's one of the ingredients. But when it's used properly, it is a powerful spiritual force. It's a gift from the Father whose purpose is to bring into the seen from the unseen or to move from hope to faith. Now, if you haven't caught it yet, let me just say it plainly. I'm doing three sessions this morning, next Sunday, and the Sunday after. But it's all connected together. It's actually one message. But I, I know I'm not going to take three hours or 345 minutes back to back this morning to get it all out at one time. So I'm going to stretch it out. So whatever you do, please don't miss next Sunday and don't miss the week after. Or if you're not here on Sunday morning, <clears throat> most of you are not on Sunday morning. You pick it up during the week. Make sure that you don't miss it. Now, there's an old saying that says the things you look at will change when you change the way that you look at things. So we're going to, this morning, we're going to change the way that we look at things. We're going to change the way we look at, at two little groups here this morning. I want to change the way that you look at, uh, at hope and faith. And I want to change the way that you look at the seen and the unseen. And the role that imagination plays in those things to manifest, to move the seen to the unseen, to move the invisible to the visible. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the seen and the unseen, hope and faith, right? I want you to see seen, unseen, hope and faith. 
And this morning, I want to bring some revelation for illumination. Next Sunday morning, I want to bring some separation for clarification. Then the third Sunday, we will do some unification for cooperation. And that's when you're going to see these ingredients as they are blended together to result in the cake coming out of the oven just the way that you envisioned it. Imagination is going to shine out. But there are, there are other connectors. I call them connectors. From the invisible to the visible, from the unseen to the seen, that make manifestation possible. And I said this morning, we're going to just, I'm just going to look at some re revelation for illumination. So when we're done today, you're probably going to have an awful lot of questions. It's, it might seem foggy. It might seem vague. You might not, you might just say, I don't get it. Just stay with me for the entire three sessions. And I will assure you, you're going to get it. I assure you that. And if you don't go back and listen to it again, you will. This will, this will come as a revelation to you and you're going to begin to function in this. So let's begin this morning. I want to take a look at faith and hope. Let me, let me just read Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse one out of the New King James. It says, now, now faith is, faith is always now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So right now we see right off the bat that faith is a substance and it is an evidence. Let me read this out of the, out of the Passion Translation. I love the way the Passion Translation puts this. Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Let me, I got to read that again. Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence that is required to prove what is still unseen. Now, let's go back to the New King James. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Now, did you notice something in that, in that reading? It's now faith is the evidence, it is the substance, it is the proof, but you can't see it. I want you to notice the wording in that, in that first verse. It says, now substance is the evidence of things hoped for. That's past tense. Past tense. Faith is not the substance of what you're hoping for. Faith and hope are two entirely different animals. Now, I want you please get this. This is revelation for illumination this morning. Faith is always now. Now faith is. It's always now. Hope is always in the future. Faith is the substance and the evidence of what you once had hope for. But now that faith has got a hold of it, you don't hope for it anymore because faith is a substance and faith is an evidence. So if faith has grabbed a hold of it, no longer are you hoping for it. Are, are you with me? Faith, faith makes hope past tense. Hope is always future. Faith is always now. It's no longer in the future if you have it by faith. It is the evidence and the substance that is as real as the red car you drive and the white shirt that you wear. The only difference is you see the red car manifested and you see the white shirt that you wear, you see it visibly with your eyes. But the substance and the evidence that faith has provided is no, no more no less real than those two things. All right, I'm, let's, we're going to look at what Paul said. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. All I'm doing this morning, I'm bringing, I'm bringing revelation for illumination. Some of you have never heard the difference between 
faith and hope. Paul said this, Romans chapter 8 and verse 24. He said, for, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. And we're seeing it by faith. Hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Why does one hope for what he sees? You don't hope for what you already have. You don't hope for what you already possessed. Now faith is the substance and the evidence. Therefore, you no longer hope for it. You possess it. Are you with me? Now, if you say, and I've heard this so many times throughout, and some of you that have charismatic, Pentecostal, Baptist backgrounds, evangelical backgrounds, you've heard this all, all your life. If I say, I have my faith out there that I will have the rent by 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's say I don't have the rent money. And I say, I have my faith out there that I will have the rent money by 10 a.m. in the morning. That's not faith, that's hope. You're hoping. If, if, if I say, I believe I will be healed, that's not faith, that's hope. It's still futuristic. Saying you'll have rent, you hope you have rent by 10 in the morning, that's not faith, that's hope, that's futuristic. You don't have it. Faith is now. Hope is future. I want you to get this down, down deep in your spirit because if we're going to start manifesting, we have to do it by faith. And a lot of us have confused the two elements because we always were a hoping and a praying. You ever heard that one? Well, I'm just a hoping and a praying that God will, God will come through. I'm praying and claiming. I'm, I'm claiming the promise. No, that's all hope. That's all hope. Faith sees it. And I'm going to teach you how to see it. I'm going to teach you how to put legs and arms on, on, on faith. Faith sees it and it receives it now. Paul said when you, when, you, when you see it, you no longer have hope for it. You already got it. Hope moves to past tense as soon as faith grasps it. Hope I'm, hope I'm raising some questions in your mind. And hope, hope you're going, man, this is fascinating, but I'm, I'm not catching it yet. Well, let's look at Jesus. Jesus lived by faith, and he lived from faith, and he taught faith. In fact, I'm, my count might be off one or two, I don't know, but I went through a, a quick scan of the Gospels, and I see that Jesus taught faith 29 times in Matthew and Mark and Luke. Right. In the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus, Jesus taught faith 29 times. And the only time, he only used the word hope one time. And it was in reference to this. This is, this is so good. Some of you can relate to this. Luke chapter 6. Here's the only time Jesus that I found in the New King James that used, used the word hope. Luke chapter 6. And verse 34, this is kind of a little rabbit trail, but I think it's kind of hilarious. Jesus said, if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you for even sinners lend to, even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back? You ever loan money to, to a relative or a friend? You bet, all you can do is hope. To get it back and chances are you're not going to get it back so Jesus said that's just a hope that's just a hope now here's here's how faith talks John chapter 2 John chapter 2 this is Jesus and I just pulled one out because I think it I think it expresses it really well in John chapter 2 in verse 19 Jesus said to them you destroy this temple speaking about his body you destroy this temple and in three days, I'll raise it up again. That's not hope, brother. That, that, he didn't say, I, I, I hope, man, I'm trusting the Father to raise this up again. No, he, he, didn't, he didn't say, I, you know, maybe I better call the prayer chain and they might be able to get a hold of heaven because I'm just hoping that we can get enough prayer people together that we can receive and th this will happen. No, 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 no. That was a strong faith statement. 
At that point, he was as good as raised. Strong, you, you destroy this temple three days, I will raise it up again. He wasn't hoping. He wasn't hoping in a praying. He wasn't putting his faith out there to try to re get the, something futuristically. He brought it right into now. You do, it, you do it whenever you want. Kill me now, I'll raise it three days. Do it six months from now, I'll still raise it in three days. All right, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, faith is extremely important in what we're doing here. Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. <clears throat> Some of you old Haganites, Kenneth Hagan people, you're, you're going you're gonna to recognize these verses. Every time I read these, I think, I think, oh, Pop Hagan, I sure, I learned a lot from that man. It was, a lot of it was very works oriented, but I learned a lot. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, but I, <clears throat> I'm in Matthew. Matthew is not going to work. I got to talking while I was turning and I didn't get to the right place. Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. Jesus said to them, right, we're talking about revelation for illumination right now on faith and hope. Faith is always now. Hope is always future. If we're going to manifest, if we're going to bring the unseen to the seen, if we're going to bring the invisible to the visible, we've got to start working in the now. And faith is what gets us in the now. Here's what Jesus said. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus said, have faith in God. That's not a very good translation. I was looking to see if my yard man was here. If he comes, he's loud. I got to cut it off and start all over again. I try to get, he usually comes on the day that I, I record. Actually, he, Jesus said, have faith in God. I think a, a, a correct translation of that verse would be this. I learned this from Kenneth Hagin. Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith, right? He tells us to have the God kind of faith. And we, we read back there in Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse 1 that faith is the substance of things hoped for, it is the evidence of things not seen. And if, if you, I'm not going to take time, but if you go to Romans 4 17, you'll see that the God kind of faith calls things that be not as though they were. He gives life to the dead. And he calls things that be not as though they were. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, speaking about the God kind of faith, it says that everything you see visibly was created out of what you don't see. So again, I'm contending that everything that you needed has already been created. It's that you don't see it. But the Father has brought us to this time in history. Quantum physics is a, is a, is a great insight into much of what I'm teaching. I'm using church language. Quantum physics uses the language of science. But it's still the same objective, and that is to bring what you don't see into what you see, what is invisible into what is visible. Everything you see was created out of what you don't see. It doesn't mean that it's not the ingredients, the cake ingredients, the flour, the, the, the sugar, the salt, the bacon. It's all there. And in fact, it's already been mixed and, and the cake is done. But we have got to get the cake from the invisible to the visible. All right. So he said, have the God kind of faith. Now, verse 23 and verse 24 says, this is how the God kind of faith works. And we're going to, again... Just stay with me, because I'm going to bring all these little elements we're talking about this week, next week. We'll bring it all together in two weeks from this, this Sunday morning. But I want you to, I'm just hammering away. I want revelation for, found, revelation for illumination this morning. Next week, we're going to do a little separation. We're going to clarify. We're going to, we're going to focus in on some things. And then the third week, we're going to bring it all back for unification, for cooperation. And when I'm done, I, you're going to see what you've never saw. All right, here's how the God kind of faith works. For assuredly I say to you, whosoever says, this is important, we're talking, we're, some of these are going to be connectors you're going to find from the seen to the unseen. Whosoever says to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive present tense them. 
When do you receive them? When you pray. Not when you see him show up with your eyes. What sort of things you desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them. Don't doubt in your heart. Say it with your mouth. You've heard some word of faith teaching along that line, but we're going to take it to another place, another dimension. And we're working on this with, with understanding faith. Faith is not. I want you to stop hoping for stuff. Stop hoping for an increase in salary. Stop hoping for a better position. Stop hoping that your business will succeed. It's time that you begin to see them succeeding. I don't want to get ahead of where I'm going in all this. I'm just, I'm just mixing it up this morning a little bit for you. Are, are you. are you still with me? We're going to get there. <laughs> We're going to get there, I promise. All we're doing this morning is bringing revelation for illumination. We're shining the light. That's what illumination does. We're shining the light on some areas in, in, in hope and faith and seen and unseen. Now I'm going to make a little shift. I've been talking about faith and hope up to this point. So all I want you to see right now, and just accept it, hope is future, faith is now. Faith people have the evidence. They have the substance of what they once, futuristically, had hope for. Now I'm going to make a, a little shift right now. Can I do that? I'm going to make a little shift, and I want us to look for just a few minutes. I did just about half my time. That's good. We're doing good. I want to make a little shift right now, and I want to look at the seen and the unseen. The seen and the unseen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, I've, I've quoted this verse a lot, but I want, I, want to, I want it to impact you this morning. Because faith is now, hope is future. Now here's, here's, here's an important element. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are seen, the things that are visible, are temporary, they're temporal, they pass away, they fluctuate, they change. They're not the same tomorrow as they are today. It creates great instability. That's what causes your emotional ups and downs is that you get so focused on what you see, so focused on the circumstances that all you can do is hope to get out of this. No. We don't look at the things that we look at the things that are not seen because the things that are not seen are eternal. So there's two dimensions here. There is the seeing, which is temporary, which is subject to change, which vacillates. If you don't believe that, watch the stock market. And then we have the unseen, which is eternal. Now follow me. I'll stick with I want do this. I want you to do this. In your mind, I want you to put the unseen up here. Now, if you're listening on a podcast, I have my hand elevated above. Hi. I want you to put the unseen up here. And I want you to put the seen, and I've got my other hand if you're listening to podcasts, down lower. So we've got the un unseen up high, and we've got the seen down low. Are you with me? Now, I want you to draw an imaginary line between the unseen and the seen. Just draw a line to separate the unseen from the seen. Remember this morning's revelation for illumination. We're seeing some things. Now that verse tells us to look, to focus, to make a priority the unseen or the eternal which is above the line. Now, I want, to, I want to give credit where credit's due. I, I learned this concept of above the line, below the line from a, a guy named Dan Stone that wrote a book, The Rest of the Gospel. He didn't apply it as I'm applying it, but I just want to throw that out there in case you've read the book. Uh, I, I got the concept from him, but I'm not utilizing it in the way that he did. Right. The verse tells us, while well, we look not at the things that are seen below the line, we look at the things that are unseen Above the line. Now, of course, there's no line. Of course, there's no line. The two realms coexist together. 
but I'm separating them for illumination. I'm separating them so that you can see the difference this morning. Now, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 8, verse 23. John chapter 8 and verse 23. Are you, got, you, you, you tracking with me? Unseen above the line. That's where we are to focus. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, we don't look at the things that are below the line. We don't look at the seen. We don't look at the temporary. We look at the unseen, the eternal. That's where our focus, that's where our reality lies. Jesus said, and we got, we got a line drawn between the two so we can make a distinction. Jesus said, Romans chapter 8, or John chapter 8, I'm sorry, John chapter 8, verse 23. He said, you are from beneath. You are of this world. You're of the seen. You're of the temporary. You're of the fluctuating. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you, you'll die in your sins because your focus is on this is below the world. You are from beneath, Jesus said. I am from above. You are from beneath. I am from above. Here's, here's how... Paul put it post-resurrection. So Jesus is saying, I operate up here above the line, the eternal, the unseen, that which doesn't change, that which is permanent. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. It says, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he has raised you up from below the line so that you can function now above the line. He's raised you from, from the earthly perception of changeable things, and he's moved you to a new place. Paul said the new creation operates from the same position as Jesus. Now what Paul, Paul and Jesus are both talking about are levels of consciousness. They're talking about perception. They're talking about the way that you see things. So let, me, let me emphasize. Above the line is the eternal unseen. It's the realm of spirit. It's the realm of God's absolutes. It's the place of ultimate reality. The kingdom of God functions above the line. So where everything is, when Jesus said it is finished, he's talking about above the line. Things are settled. It's where everything you need, everything you need for life and godliness is stored above the line. It's been created. It's there. It's the place where all things are possible. It's the dimension of faith. It is the dimension of finished. Now, here's where we've been operating. We've been operating below the line, which is the place of seeing. It's, it's where needs exist and desires and continual change hope, appearances, past, present, and future. There's a beginning and there's an end below the line. It's temporary. Are, are you getting, I want you to get a visualization of that. I want you to begin to see the two different dimensions and to which one you actually belong and function out of or should be functioning out of, but nobody's taught us how to live above the line. Nobody's taught us how to live out of the unseen, how to bring into manifestation that which we cannot see. But the kingdom is here and it's time that we begin to, to just put, manifestation to it. I'm tired of hearing people talk about the kingdom and, and the need for the kingdom and the power of the kingdom, but there's no manifestation of the kingdom. Below the line is a process. Below the line is I am becoming. But I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm not yet complete, but I, I'm getting there. That's not what Paul said. Paul said, in Jesus dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. He's talking about above line function. All right, another passage of Scripture, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. All right, I'm just going to read the first couple of verses. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you then were raised with Christ, he just told back there in chapter 2, verse 6, same book, or Ephesians chapter 2, that we were raised up with Christ. So he says now, to the Colossian church, he says, if you guys were raised with Christ, he said, seek those things which are above. Are you seeking that which is above? Are you, are you doggedly determined to see what is already yours come into actual manifestation, into visibility? 
where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. Oh man, I see all the, I have just read to you so many connectors this morning that we're going to, when we start bringing unification for cooperation, we're going to start pulling all these connectors out. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your mind above, not below the line. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's above the line. That's all above the line talking. Now, both were, I'm, not, I'm not discrediting one realm over the other because God created both. There's no question about that. We live in a, in a, in a seen temporal realm. That's where our feet are planted. But that's not our realm. That's not where we're from. In John chapter 17, hope I'm not wearing you out with too many scriptures, but I, I want you to see I'm not making this stuff up. This is not some kind of a new age, you know, hokey pokey. This is Bible. This is scripture. When God said, I've created you my image and my likeness, and I want you to go and replenish and, and, and do everything that we need to do to subdue, he's talking about being a co-creator and, and, and that term has been a red flag to some people, but I'm telling you, it's not a red flag. It's simply moving visible from invisible. He's already created in the invisible. He's already created in the unseen. And now he has set you on the planet to make the connection to begin to bring forth his plans on the planet. You are the functioning, the functioning purpose of God here today. All right, Jesus said this. See, both realms are important. We've got our feet. We're functioning. We're living in this scene realm. No question about it. But Jesus said this in John chapter 17 and verse 15. He said, I don't pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world below the line. That's not their reality. That's not their home. That's not where they function. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Was Jesus walking on the planet when he said that? Yes, he was. But he's saying that's, that's, that's not our power source. That's not where we draw from. Are, are you with me this morning? All I'm doing is bringing revelation for illumination. I want you to move your, your focus, your attention off the things that are around you off what you're seeing, and I want you to begin to put your focus in an absolute different place. The tree of life is above the line. That's the tree of, of just responding to God, what he says, which is going to be another connector we're going to get into between the unseen and the seen, the bridge to bring the manifestation of what we need. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil is always below the line. It's what you perceive as good by, by circumstances and what your senses are feeding to you. That's the whole seen realm. That's what got Adam into trouble to begin with. As a man who emptied himself, Philippians chapter 2 says, emptied himself of his deity, the word's kenosis, and walked as a man on the earth. Everything, everything we do is like Jesus did as he lived below the line. He was tempted in every area below the line that you and I are. All, all of the pulls uh, by what he could see and what he could feel. Every, that's all below the line stuff. It pulled on him. Jesus had needs, you guys. Jesus had wants. Jesus, Jesus had desires. If he didn't have desires and needs and wants, then he wouldn't be tempted in all points as we are, your book says, yet without sin. What Jesus did, however, is he pulled from above and manifested below. What do you think water to wine? What do you think feeding 20,000 people with five loaves and two fish was all about? In a very similar way, and I'm just bringing revolution, revelation for illumination, in a very similar way, we live both above and below the line. We live in a, in a temporary, visible world, and yet we are to focus, Paul said, on the unseen. The Father's already perfected us. The Father's already, already empowered us. Father has placed us above the line. You hear people say we've, we're, we're functioning way below our position. Most of them don't know what they're saying, but that's exactly what they're saying. See, he has perfected us. We are, 
Colossians 2, 10, we are complete in him. You're lacking nothing. There isn't anything that, that he can yet do. He made him to be sin with our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness means right standing. You're, you're in total right standing today. You'll never be more righteous than you are this morning. Never, ever. I don't care what you do or how you try to modify your behavior. Above the line, you are as righteous as you'll ever be. Colossians, <laughs> some of you need, need continual legal affirmation. So here we go. Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. He ain't looking at you from below the line. He's not looking at your, your, your deeds or your circumstances, where you foul up. No, 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 no. Listen, in the body of his flesh through death, you were crucified with him. If one died for all, died. You resurrected with him. So what he did, he pulled you right into his life. And by doing that, he's presented you holy, blameless, and above reproach in the eyes of the Father because all the Father sees is above the line. All these truths I'm giving you, you know, I spend a lot of time on a digital cathedral teaching, and basically what I do is I teach you constantly above the line, the unseen, the eternal, the unchangeable place where the faith of the Father, the, the, the creator of creators, the creator of the universe, that we just read did it all by faith. In Genesis chapter 1, God, God set it into motion, and I, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but in Genesis chapter 1, when God said, let there be, God said, God said, God said, he was creating that in his imagination. It wasn't until Genesis chapter 2 that it all manifested. So in Genesis chapter 2, he's pulling into the, the, the scene, and we'll probably get into this in, in the next week or two. He's pulling into the scene what he created in his mind in Genesis chapter 1. His kingdom within us is above the line. And that's where we dwell. That's our, our focus. It's the dimension where everything is possible. Every possibility, every possible answer and scenario has been created above the line. I can't tell you how it's all going to come to pass, but I will tell you two weeks from, from this morning, you're going to have an idea of how to, to, uh, how to help Bring to pass that which you want to see come to pass as you want to see it. All right, I'm, I'm starting to land this plane this morning. 2 Peter chapter 1. Let me reiterate this. 2 Peter chapter 1. And let me read just verses 3 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 1. Got to go one more page here. And verse 3. It says, as his divine power has given to us, his divine power has imputed to us, direct deposited into your life. He's, it's already there. Everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Now, the key there is the knowledge of him. What I'm doing this week, next week, and the following week is bringing the knowledge of him of how to, how to manifest. This... This is what's going to shake the world. When we become proficient at bringing from the unseen to the seen, the invisible to the visible, it will shake the world. They will beat a, they will beat a path to your door wanting to know how you do this. That's when our God, when the glory of God covers the earth like waters cover the sea. That's when arise and shine, your light has come. Light to the Gentile. Kings will come from afar. The Old Testament says, this is, this is how it happens. But I got to get you convinced it's all within you. It's all above the line. It's just invisible. But he's given ways. He's given connectors. What do you think Jesus, when Jesus prayed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's talking about moving out of what is in the unseen to the seen. And we're, we're seeing how we can begin to do that. I'm just illuminating you this morning. Verse 3, as his divine power is given to us all things by the godliness, life and God, through the knowledge of him 
who called us by his glory and virtue, by which we have been given exceeding great and precious promises. The fulfillment, the manifestation of every promise that God has given to you. And I'm not talking about promises out of here. Although some can be. I'm talking about the things that he has dropped into your life. You're sitting there and you're living check to check. None of us in the kingdom should be living check to check. You shouldn't be living with a zero balance in your checkbook, just hoping and praying you can make it to the next pray, payday. That's, that's, that's not our function. He's given us exceeding great and promises that by these you might be a partaker of the divine nature. Doggone it, I'm talking about partaking of the divine nature, what rightfully belongs to you as an inheritance, as a position, because you are created in his image and likeness. If those verses are true, if, if Peter was not flat out lying to us, then you, everything that you need has already been created. I want that to be the revelation this morning. And you're not hoping for it. You've got to start getting it by faith. You've got to start seeing it. You say, how do I do that? Be with me next week. Be with me the following week. It's sitting above the line. It's in the unseen, the eternal, the timeless, unchanging dimension where faith is king and it resides. It's how our daddy operated. See, we, live, we live below the line. That's true. We live in a temporary, time-controlled, changing world where we at best can only hope to receive what the Father has given. All right, this revelation for illumination has drawn some some truths out concerning faith and hope. Again, faith is now. Hope is always future. Faith is the substance of things hoped, past tense for. You're not hoping for it. Faith has got it. And we've looked at some seen and unseen, and we've put the unseen above the line, the seen below the line, just revelation for illumination. So next week we're going to look at some separation for for a clarification. We're going to take the two and we're going to keep looking at this. And I want it to crystallize within you. Then the following week, we'll bring it all together. We'll bring all the ingredients of the cake together, get it all mixed up, pour, pour the batter into the, into the cake pan, and we'll bring that sucker out of the oven. And it will manifest. I guarantee you, the cake will manifest when all the ingredients are mixed and blended, put into the pan and put into the oven. It will happen. All right. I think that's it for this morning. Go back and listen to this again. If you did not listen to the, to the five teachings before this, this is the first Sunday of November 2023. I don't know when you'll listen to it. But there were five Sundays in October in 2023. 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. I laid the foundation for all of this. I laid the foundation for it. If, if you're just trying to jump in right here, you, you're not going to you're not going to be qualified to hear it all. I want you to hear it all. So go back and listen to those five, or listen to them for the very first time. And let's do this thing together. You are you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God did not bring you to the kingdom to live below the line, to live in poverty, to live in doubt, to live in fear. He brought you here to understand you are not of the world, even as Jesus is not. Jesus has said, I'm from above, you're from below. He's talking about level of consciousness. He's talking about where he wanted them to end up above the line exactly as he was. Paul said, you've been raised together with Christ. Heavenly plot, above the line. All right, I'm shutting it down. Thank you for being with me. Don't forget the secret place on Wednesday night. Also, we've kicked off last Sunday was our first Sunday on the Now Television Network. I just want to say a, a thank you to those of you that are helping me with this. I've got television time, editing, production I haven't had before. Uh, I'm not at a break-even place yet, so if the Spirit prompts you to help us with that, I, that would be great. That would be great. Don't take your rent money. Don't take your car payment money, your grocery money. But if you've got extra, God has really blessed you. And you say, I want to shoulder this with you. Let's make this journey together. Let's take this message to the nations, which is what we're doing. Then come on, partner with me. God bless you. See you next time. If your heart has been touched by Don Keithley's words, 
and you believe this ministry can enrich your spiritual journey, we warmly invite you to subscribe and hit the bell icon. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with all the new and inspiring content from the Digital Cathedral, ensuring you never miss out on the transformative power of God's love and grace. You may make a donation at donkeithley.com. We thank you for your continued support and encouragement.